Good morning, lovely people. Welcome back to the farm at Free Warden. I am standing in the middle of the aftermath of yesterday's furious work to get the garage, garages cleaned up and we've got a whole mess around me. My goodness, ugh, I hate it. But I'm gonna show you anyway. My brother was over here helping out and there's just stuff lying everywhere because of course we didn't get it finished. So that's what we're gonna be working on this morning. I don't know when it's gonna happen. Could be this morning, could be tomorrow morning, but we've got to try to be as ready as possible. We have over 200 checks coming today, and they need a nice, dry, warm, safe brooder to sleep in, to stay in, to live in, to eat, to drink, all that good stuff. We're setting that up in the garage. I've surrendered, I've surrendered the garage. It's the chickens can have it. <laughs> Here's the thing, I would love to be able to finish any one of these other buildings, the garages, and get it all insulated, get concrete floors in across the whole thing, sealed up, safe, for chicks. However, that's just not in the cards this year. There's a lot of things that are probably not in the cards this year for people, um, so I feel ya. But we need that space clean. Let's go take a look at it quick. It's still a bit of a mess. We've um, pulled out all of the tarps. And if you've never seen our brooder setup, it's a real fast, dirty, but easy setup. I'm not talking dirty in the bad way necessarily. I'm talking dirty like it's quick and dirty. Okay, dirty garage floor, uh, messes everywhere. Looks like, uh, ooh, looks like a cat was in here chasing down a mouse because that is not supposed to be on the floor, that's supposed to be right up over here. So this is also going to be our quail sanctuary because we had a tragedy in the barn, so let's go take a quick look at that. So this is our new batch of quail right here. Um, these are ones that we hatched out ourselves. They are all going to be breeders. I think every single last one of them that is, uh, you know, we're gonna have to have like four females to a male. So we've got our up and coming breeders. We've got our brand new little uh, clutch of eggs that we hatched. There's probably about 80, 90 birds in there. We go back here and this is, this is just so tragic here. Okay, so this hardware cloth is the shield, you might say. It has protected our quail from cats for a year. For one year, this kept the cats out. They never touched our quail. It wasn't until recently the cats figured out how to get in here and we have no more quail. It started out with them getting eggs. So here's an old egg. But it just began with them grabbing the eggs and then they learned how to open doors or they would just grab the quail's heads as they stuck them out. This is a tragedy, except for the fact that we have new up and coming breeders. We hatched them out right here on the farm so they didn't cost us anything because this many quail would probably, you know, to replace all of our breeders would probably cost a couple hundred bucks. They're not cheap birds and the price has actually gone up. So, you know, I think last year they were about three, four bucks each. This year, I think they're close to seven. It's kind of crazy, guys. Kind of crazy what prices are doing. I don't know if you're watching this, if you're paying attention, but I mean, has anybody, has anybody seen this or is this just me? Milk is through the roof, eggs are through the roof. So we lost all of our breeder quail to our mousers. We have to replace them. Those guys, they'll be laying in a couple of weeks here. Um, so it's not terrible, terrible, but the amount of quail that we've got in that brooder back there, we'll actually go through that in a matter of a few weeks at the most. So they're not, it's not gonna last that long. Yes, good boy. Good job, good boy. No, 
Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. Should we let Bella out? As is all too often the case on a farm, dogs will go and they will roll in a dead animal and or they'll go and roll in something rotten and they'll stink and there's inevitably they they will find it there's no way to 100 percent clean it up there's no real way to avoid it they're gonna go and they're gonna roll in something and ragnar did he rolled in something nasty yesterday it was uh in the evening <laughs> he came up to us it was horrible i've smelled the dogs when they've rolled and stuff before. He was just putting off this cloud of whew, nasty, nasty stuff. Come on, chicky chick. Woo. There we go. Yeah, so that was just a chicken decided to jump out of the pasture and come on up this way and see what's up. There's 101 things I gotta fix today and 101 things I gotta fix tomorrow. I think uh, other people who raise animals can probably relate. It's like, yeah, there's 20 things that I'd like to get done today, but I have to put those aside. The things that are gonna make my farm look good. The things that are gonna make me feel better about my farm. Those are the things that we're not gonna be able to do because there's like 10 other things that we gotta do to keep the animals alive and healthy and well. Now don't chase chickens. Don't chase chickens, okay? Good boy. Yes, good boy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see, our coop gets lots of light. We've got uh, overhead skylights, two of them, one there and one a little further on. You can just see a slit of it. And then we've got our side doors, our windows. So these things open from the outside, just swing up wings. They'll keep the air moving through the coop during the summer days so it stays nice and cool in there and they don't they don't all get overheated we got a whole little troop of waterfowl up here all the geese and ducks they stick together now I think they know that I think they know that they need each other eight crates of chickens okay sounds good I uh, when I get out of the pasture I'll come and get them I was just informed that the chicks have arrived at the post office. I'm gonna run into town and pick those up and <laughs> this is earlier than usual. Normally they call around eight o'clock, but I guess they wanna get rid of those chicks. These chicks, they hatched yesterday. They shipped yesterday afternoon, evening, and they are now at the post office already. We've got some chicks. There they are. There they are, chicky. Yeah, these guys are a little bigger. Oh, do you like the chicky chickies? So all of the chicks have arrived. We've got to get to work on the brooders. We're gonna have at least a thousand pounds of meat ready to go in eight to 10 weeks. Just incredible. Just 15 and a half. Ragnar was over here. He's very curious about what is in the boxes. What do you think there? What do you think there, huh? What do you think? What is it? What is it? Just be thankful you don't have to live in this house right now. Um, kind of an interesting thing about our older dogs is although we will feed them uh, chicks that have died, chicks that have passed and haven't made it, We'll go ahead and give them to them. It's just a little snack to them. Uh, they, they're pretty good about leaving the live chicks alone. And you know, they're curious and they smell them and they might, you know, give them a lick or something. But um, so far, unless they know that we want them to eat them, they haven't gone after them. People have asked me, you know, why do you feed the chicks? 
aren't, aren't you afraid if you feed a chick, a dead chick, to your dogs, don't you think they might try to go after your live chicks? That may be a thing, but it hasn't been something that we've experienced. So, you know, to each their own, if you don't want to do that with your dogs, if you were doing something like this, that's, that's fine. We haven't had that problem. We try to socialize them to the chicks, and they seem to get it and understand that, you know, our older dogs so far understand that this is not food unless it's being handed to us. And they've been really good about that. So what we've got to do is clean this up, set up a brooder. I got to finish building a brooder. Go get the quail out of the other brooder. Move them into the grow out pen. Before we can do that, we got to move the future breeder quail. Well, they are breeder quail. They just haven't reached that age yet. We need to move them out of the grow out pen into the breeding uh, hutch. <sighs> yeah, we've got a little bit to do today. We're going to go ahead and get started here and uh, see if we can't knock this out, get it done. is a really simple brooder setup. If you have never seen this before, it's, I think it's a pretty common brooder setup, but basically you're cutting slots in these boards. So a slot on one side and a slot on the other side, and then you just fit them together like puzzle pieces. So here's how we do it. Basically we set them up with a heater in the corner. That's a heat plate. This is the one from Premier One, and this is the one from rent a -Coop. They are the exact same model, although if you get the adjustable uh, heat attachment, basically you plug this into, you plug a heat attachment into there, it's an adjustable heat attachment. I, look it up, you'll see what I'm talking about. We've never actually used it. All we do is we set this up to a proper height so that the chicks, um, you know, they, they may not be able to walk right underneath there without stooping a little bit, but they're just gonna go in there to lay down and sleep anyway. They'll come out here and eat. So we set up feeders and then we'll set up a waterer in here as well. So this is our super, super simple brooder setup. All it takes is um, one and a half sheets of plywood. So one four by eight foot sheet and one four by four foot sheet, or if you want, and what I've done is I just buy three sheets, and then I cut two of them right in half, and then I cut the final one into four pieces. So, pretty simple stuff, and this is the least expensive, it's the easiest build that I've ever found, and then when you take it all apart, 
they all lay flat. So you can lay them flat, you can put weight on them to uh, keep them from warping, and then you're good to go. This is, by far, I have not found anything less expensive than this. And, uh, you know, and then if you wanna build a smaller brooder, you just take one piece, you can take one piece of plywood, and you can take a very thin piece. You can take particle board. Um, that's what we used all last year for hundreds of chickens. We did ducks and quail, uh, you know, probably 500 plus quail. And all of that was done with just some cheap, flimsy little particle board that we, we happened to get, you know, a bargain buy on. And uh, that stuff lasted us all year and we've even used it once this year so far. So even just particle board, I mean, if, if you, you got some of that laying around, a four by eight foot sheet of that, that's gonna be awesome. It's expensive enough to raise your own meat birds. Um, I mean, definitely less expensive to get really good quality meat uh, doing it this way in the long run. We buy our ACV, that stands for apple cider vinegar, in a five gallon jug now because we just go through so much in a year. Uh, I think last year we went through two gallons, three gallons, and we didn't even use it that much. So just a splash, like maybe a tablespoon. I mean, they're gonna drink it. They're not particular. What you doing there, Delaney? Dipping their beak in the water so they know where it is. We're about to feed too. They will find the feed just fine.